Yeah, yes, glory to God, glory to God. Let me now share about asking. Because the Bible says, Ask, and it shall be given you. It shall be given unto you. When you do what? When you ask. And let me start from James chapter 4. Verse 2 he says, You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet ye have not, because you ask not. Now that's in a context of lasting or evil, wicked passions that are war within your members. It may be negative, but th this is what I want you to get. In as much as it is in the context of uh, lust, I want us to divert it uh, in a in a more better way. First Corinthians twelve thirty one. First Corinthians twelve but thirty one. It's Paul saying, but covet honestly, covet what, covet honestly the best gifts. Then he says, yet I, I show I unto you a more excellent way, which is love. The ESV puts it like this, but honestly desire. Honestly do what? Desire the higher gifts. Honestly desire the higher gifts. You see, there is, there is a way many have desired things. They've converted for things. But they've never gotten hold of them. They've never had them. Simply because they never learned how to ask. For everyone that asks, the Bible says, they are given, it shall be given unto you. But what is this? What entails asking? I want to take you a little bit deeper on this matter of asking. Luke 11 verse, verse 9. Luke 11 verse 9. Let's read till verse 13. Luke 11. He says, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and it shall find Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, for everyone, everyone that asketh, the Bible says, receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Now listen, verse 11, it says, If a son asks, if a son asks, if a son asks for any, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, Will he be given a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer will he offer him a scorpion? Verse thirteen, pay attention, he says, If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? In asking, it is more than just uh, asking for, for food or for clothes. Because the Bible says, these are the things that the people of the world look for. And your Father knows that you need food. Your Father knows that you need clothes. Because life is not about eating. It's not about, it's, it's more than that. And he's taking us to the place of asking for the Holy Spirit from the Father. Now, in asking, it is deeper. Uh, it, it is more than what you need. Of course, he says, ask anything in my name and it shall be given unto you. But more, what God wants is for you to ask for the thing that, is precious the most precious thing the best you can ever have from him you know god wants you to be in that place of deep fellowship constantly always being in in the habitation or dwelling in his secret place and this can only happen when christians walk a led of the spirit of the living god now, in asking, it is more than 
when you ask for, Oh God, give me a land. Oh God, give me a car. Oh God, I want food. It is more than that. But let's continue. There's something I want to show you. In Jeremiah 33, let's begin verse 1. He says, Moreover, the word of the Lord, Jeremiah 33, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time while he was yet shut up in the court of, of the prison, saying, Thus says the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it, to establish it, the Lord is his name. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the houses of this city, and concerning the houses of the kings of Judah, which are thrown down by the mount and by the sword. They come to fight with the Chaldeans, but it is to fill with the, with, with, with the dead bodies of men whom I have slain in my anger and in my fury, and for all whose wickedness I have hid my face from this city. Behold, he says, verse 6, I will bring it help and cure. When they have done what? When they have called unto him. And he has answered. For everyone that asketh, he shall be given of thee. He says, and I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return and will build them as at the first, and I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, whereby they have sinned against me, and I will pardon all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned, and whereby they have transgressed against me. When they do what? When they call unto me, and I will answer them, and show them great and mighty things which they do not know. Keep reading. Jeremiah 33. It's all about God saying, uh, the, 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 there shall be going, the, there's going to be the voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, Praise the Lord of hosts, uh, for the Lord is good. The, in those days, God is going to cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. When they do what? When they ask, when they call upon his name, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. This is why God says, even in Philippians chapter 4, that in verse 6, be careful for nothing. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God, which Passive all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Through Christ Jesus. Asking is deeper than what people do. It is to get to the will of God. It is to get to flow by the Spirit of the Lord. To the fulfillment of the will of God in a particular time and season. This is why we ask that the Holy Spirit will will take over us. That the Holy Spirit will make us to flow in His direction. Make us to flow in His paths. That He will lead us. That the execution of the will of God will be done in our lives. In this particular season. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You get? This, this is the depth of asking. This is why and, and I just love this verse. Psalms 2, verse 8, God says, Ask of me, ask of me, oh, ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen, the nations for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Men are asking for clothes. Men are asking for food. Which God says, look at the birds of the air. They never, they do not toil. They don't have buns. But I, do I not, do I not feed them? Do I fail to give them what to, to eat? It says, look at the grass of the field, which today are here and tomorrow they're no more. They're, they're, they're thrown into the furnace. And even Solomon in all of his glory could not array himself like this. Grass. 
How much of you? You're better than the sparrow. You're better than the grass of the field. Does God want us to ask for these things which the, which the heathen, the Gentiles ask for? The people of the world are asking for these things. God wants you to ask for something more, something better. And not better in quantity or quality, but better in the quality of His will being executed. Ah, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen, the nations for thy inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thine possession. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. This is God. He says, you shall ask of me of a nation and nations you do not know shall come running to you. There is an urgency that even... When you ask of one nation, more come. Because in the asking is that the will of God will be done in that which you are asking. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now when you ask for a family, to which or to what extent are you asking that God should give you a wife or a husband or a work or even that car? Why are you asking? Is it that the will of God will be will be fulfilled or is it for other things? For everyone that asketh, receiveth. Let me show you. Turn to Matthew. Matthew, 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 Matthew 19. Matthew 19. Zali brahasok levron yala kradishta kitale. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Matthew 19. Are you there? Matthew 19. Matthew 19. From verse 16 is the story of, of a rich, uh, of a young rich man who comes to Jesus. Let's read from verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is one good. There is none good but one. That is God. Do you know why, why Jesus Christ told him that? It's because, and I want you to now pay attention even more. It's because of the intention, the motivation this guy came with towards Jesus. And you'll actually see it later on. The motivation, in, and do you know Jesus Christ knows all things? He sees deeply in your heart. Even when you come to him to ask of the things you ask, he sees deep in your heart. And the motivation of this man as he's coming to him saying, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Jesus Christ tells him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, Which, which Jesus said, Thou shalt shall do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What, lie, what lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, <laughs> so there is perfection, go and sell that thou hast. And give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. You see, he came asking, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He was asking, but the motivation, the motivation of this young rich man was evil, was wicked was crooked, was lustful. 
you lust you desire you, you 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 lust and you ask because and and you do not receive because you ask amiss why is the asking amiss because asking amiss is when you ask for a selfish gain when the motivation is wickedness for self aggrandizement why did the pharisees come and ask jesus the many questions they used to ask him in Matthew 22 verse let's read verse 15 when the pharisees went they took counsel how that they might entangle him in his talk jesus christ you see even the asking or the questions the pharisees were asking jesus so that they may entangle him in his talk and they sent out verse 16 Matthew 22 they sent out unto him the disciples with the herodians saying master we know that thou art true and teachest the way of god in truth neither carest thou for any man for thou regardest not the person of men tell us therefore what thinkest thou is it lawful to give tribute unto caesar or not verse 18 what does the bible says jesus perceived jesus did what underline that word jesus did what he perceived the wickedness and said why tempt ye me ye hypocrites you get what did jesus do he perceived and this is what god is doing upon everyone who is asking he's perceiving jeremiah 17 the bible says The heart is deceitful verse 9 above all things and desperately wicked who can know it I the Lord Jesus he says I the Lord such the heart this is what Jesus was doing to the to the Pharisees even to the rich man when he came unto him I the Lord such the heart I try the reins I weigh even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings when the bible says for everyone that asketh receiveth it is true some pray some ask they call upon the name of the lord thinking that he has not answered them he answers them but not as they wanted but as he has searched their hearts but as he has found the state of their heart because he says i the lord search the heart i try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings it is not that god never answered you it is just that he answered according to the state of your heart what was the motivation when you were asking for that jeep for that mercedes benz for that rolls royce for that jet what was the intention when you wanted to run into a relationship even building even ministry when you ask these things what is your motivation to what extent is your heart willing to receive these things for everyone that asketh receiveth this is why men have asked but they never got that which they asked for but that which god gave them in accordance to the state of their heart after that he had searched the heart after that he had tried the reins even to give every person according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings praise the lord jesus christ praise the lord jesus christ ask god to search your heart today ask god that the holy spirit will search your heart and if there is anything that is not pleasing unto him there is a motivation a wicked a lust that has crept in unknowingly tell him to take it away and that he will purge you even as you confess your limitation even as you confess the lust that have crept in as you ask god to search your heart 
Stay rooted in the word of God. Stay rooted. Always. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about asking. You shall always stay rooted in the word of God. For the word of God is quick. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. Listen, and is the designer and is the, the word of God is the designer of the thoughts and, the, and intent of the heart is a designer of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Stay rooted in the word. Because this word, that's what it does. It is quick and powerful. Sharper than any double day. To do what? To the divining of John and Mary. And is the design of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So that in your asking, you will be sober. So that in the intents of your heart, it will be aligned with the will of God. To the satisfaction of the fulfillment of his desire and not your last. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a man today God is looking for. There is a man God is looking, waiting to answer. And this is that man. A man whose heart is humble. A man with a humble heart. You know God who salibra haklebrosis yella brahatija. Let's read Jeremiah seventeen. Let me show you something. Sombra haklebrosalia brahataz. Thank you, Jesus. Jeremiah fifteen. It's a different context, but this is what I want you to get in verse one. Then said the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward these people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. It is a time when the Israelites had transgressed, they had sinned repeatedly after God. But that's not what I'm aiming at today. There is a man. <laughs> Or the men who can stand before God. I know that they will change what he wants to do. Though there is a possibility in as much as God is supreme. It's because of the level of friendship. The level of intimacy they are with God. Men like Enoch that they walk with God until they're no more. To, to, to what places are these people reached to? And now God is dwelling in us. How far should we be? How far should you be? You carry God. Moses and Samuel, God is saying, inasmuch as though they, they stood before me, yet my mind could not. It means that people who can stand before God and God will not only hear them, but he will answer whatsoever they ask the men that stand before God and God is just waiting for of someone the Bible says he never spake a word and it fell to the ground without it being accomplished of Moses God is coming to judge the brother and the sister Aaron and, 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 and Miriam the first time we see leprosy it was a judgment which God did upon Someone who spake ill or against a man who was so humble because God says in all in the whole world there's no man 
like Moses. He was humble. He was humble. He says, if there is any other prophet in Israel, I speak to them in visions and in dreams, but not so with my servant Moses. With him I speak face to face. How dare you speak ill against him? And God there judges who? Miriam. But even after Miriam is judged and for some days is, she's outside the city because she had leprosy. What happens? Moses goes and asks, God to lift it up. Moses goes and pleads. And many times, many incidences, Moses did that. On asking the men that can stand before God, the men that can even intercede. This is friendship. Asking for the mercies of God, of, of God con upon territories, upon families, upon individuals. Is not done by anyone, but by Christians, and not just any Christian. I'm taking you deeper concerning this, this theme of asking. It is done by people who are intimate with the Holy Ghost. Them that are flowing in the patterns or by the leadership of the Holy Spirit to the deeper places of the execution of the will of God. Not just asking for daily bread, not just asking for 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 clothes for the raiment ah uh -uh, but but of the will of god these are the people god is looking for men with humble hearts praise the lord jesus christ because god gives grace to the humble he rejects the proud god gives grace to the humble he rejects the proud he exalts the humble. He brings down the proud. Psalms 50, what does the Bible say? Psalms 50 verse 5. Psalms 50 verse 5, what does the Bible say? Yes, he says, Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Gather my saints unto me. Gather my saints together unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. What sacrifice is this? What sacrifice is this? In 51 Psalms, verse 17, the Bible says, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken spirit. And a contrite heart, O God, thou will not despise. A broken spirit. These are the sacrifices of God. A broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou will not despise. There is a man God is looking and waiting to answer. What was the sin? What did the devil do? Then call Lucifer. It was this. Pride. Pride rose in his heart. Pride rose within himself. In Isaiah 14, he says from verse 12, How art thou fallen from heaven, O, Le o Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? He says, For thou hast said in thine heart, you have said, in thine heart, I will ascend into heavens. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mountain, mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou, sh sh yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. God gives grace to the humble but rejects the proud. This is what happened to the devil. Pride was found in his heart. Pride was found in his heart. Do you know what humility is? Humility is the right attitude towards self in regards to God. It is sinful to acknowledge what you are not. 
and it is also sinful to acknowledge not to acknowledge what god has given you it is sinful to acknowledge what you are not and it is sinful not to acknowledge what god has given you praise the lord jesus christ people can fake anointing people can fake anointing but not humility we are called commanded to be humble because humility befits creation and not the creator praise the lord jesus christ there is a man god is looking for there is a man god is looking for and this is a man with a contrite heart a broken spirit thou will not despise he say isaiah 66 bible says let's begin in verse 1 he says thus says the lord the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool why is the house of the chief build unto me and why is the place of my rest for all these things have mine hand made and all those things have been says the lord but to this man will i look to this man will i look which man for what because he is looking for a place of rest he is looking for a place where he will be housed a habitation not in the heaven nor in the earth because the heaven is his, is where his throne is and the earth is his footstool but where is the house that you have built for god Do you know that your body is the temple of God? But more than that is asking, where is the place for my rest? There is an atmosphere. There is there is a habitation God is looking for. And he says, even to this man will I look. Even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. even to him that is pure poor means humility and of a contrite spirit it means is a guy or is a woman that is submissive in spirit and trembleth at my word trembles at god's word is one who is respectful one who honors god praise the lord jesus christ this is the man god is looking for this is the person god wants to answer praise the lord jesus christ so by asking it is not for self aggrandizement it is not to fulfill the wicked passions that war within yourself jesus says not my will but thine he never insisted on his way even in asking we insist on the will of god we insist on the will of god jesus christ insisted he thought it not robbery to be equal with god but made himself of no reputation he took upon him the form of a servant and died even the dead on a cross a shameful death not my will but thine o god praise the lord jesus christ you see by asking now you understand by asking in a heart of humility what shall happen or what happens is this the holy spirit one teaches you unto perfection by asking in a heart of humility or with a heart of humility the holy spirit teaches you unto perfection because you've now allowed him you've given him room you've come you've yielded yourself to his leadership he begins to teach you unto perfection first john 2 verse 27 the bible says but the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you and you need not that any man teach you but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things and is true and is no lie and even as it hath taught you ye shall abide in him praise the lord jesus christ 
The second thing I've realized that happens when you ask in a heart of humility, you are directed into the paths God ordained for you. What happens? You are directed into the paths God ordained for you. The Bible says, You shall hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way. Walk therein. God is telling the Israelites, Stand at the crossroads. Ask for the good way. Ask for the ancient path. As for that good way, where it is, and walk therein. But they said we will not walk in it. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But when you begin to ask in that heart of humility, the Lord directs you into the path that he has ordained for you. Eternal life is given. Three. Eternal life is given. Eternal life is given when you ask. When you ask, Zakia prahak le brosa sila bahatej, brosa le vriasta kidia glabrasta kitali. When you ask in that heart of humility, what happens? Eternal life is given. There are two thieves crucified, both sides of Jesus Christ, on the right and on the left, and one in humility asks Jesus Christ that when you go. Please do not forget me. Paraphrasing. What does Jesus Christ tell to this man? Today you shall be with me in paradise. Today. 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 Eternal life is given when you ask. The disciples come to Jesus and say, We have left all these things. What is it? What is in for us? What is in for us? Jesus Christ tells him, not only in this life, but even in the one to come. What shall he receive? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Eternal life is given when you ask. He says, if there is any man that thirsted, Jesus Christ stood on it. It was on that day. It's a great day of the feast, the last day. And the student says, If any man thirsts, let him come to me and ask of the water. And as it is written, Out of the bellies shall flow rivers of living water. When you just ask, when you ask, eternal river begins to flow. Eternal life is given. Ask. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Ask.